What's up, y'all? Glad y'all made it here. Talk about this. If you come to get some help, I'm here to help you. Today we're going to talk about um, relieving ourselves from the patterns of aggression. And there's a A lot of aggression in the world today. Now, I'm going to point out a lot of things about this aggression thing. So, y'all need to get your pen and pad ready. All right, yo. Welcome back to another Breaking Habitual Patterns video series. I am your spiritual guide and your, your luminary here to bring you the light. My name is Omaka the Light, and I'm here to bring you the light so that you can carry on in your life better than the way you came into this video. If you haven't been watching all my videos, well, I know that you're going to be better for the, at least today for being here today. Um, your life may be better be better if you watch the whole series. But if you weren't here for the whole video series, then you're not gonna get all of what you needed from this video from these video series, breaking habitual patterns. So you may want to go back and watch some of those videos so that you can upgrade and expand and elevate and evolve. Because your mind needs to be evolved. And your, your consciousness needs to expand and your mind needs to evolve. So, 
this is going to be a good talk because I'm not going from notes today. And the reason why I'm not going from notes is because I know enough about the subject matter that I don't have to go from notes. So for those tuning in, thank you. I'm going to take the screen off now so it can just be an interaction of me and you. Okay. Now that you saw what we're about to do. All right, beloved, thank you for joining me and thank you for being here. Thank you for rising with me. I know I'm, I'm on a different time right now because usually I'm on a East Coast. Um, I'm in the Midwest right now, but usually I'm in the East Coast. And my time is usually around the same time every day, which is nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time um, every sunrise. But I'm not on the East Coast right now. I'm actually in the Midwest and I'm actually um, doing some, what would you call it? Book planning? Yeah. Publishing, um, publishing work. So yeah, book planning and publishing work, stuff like that, period, point blank. Um, the goal here is to just uh, touch as many lives. And that's always my goal, to touch as many people as I can with my message, with the work that I'm doing. For those of you who are just joining me, thank you for joining. Can't really see the lights kind of blinding me. But um, let's get into this breaking habitual patterns of aggression. Sorry because I'm late to you on your time. I'm late. I'm on Midwest time. It's kind of confusing me a little bit on what time to get up and start. I know I'm supposed to get up at 8 o'clock to be at 9 o'clock on East time, Eastern Standard Time. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, guys, I, I, I just want to say thank you again. So let's get into this. Let's talk about patterns of aggression. What, is it, what does it mean to be... What, is it, what, is it, what does a habitual pattern of aggression look like? What does a habitual pattern of aggression look like? This is the question. What does a habitual pattern of aggression look like? The answer to that question is... <clears throat> where you lash out at any given moment. Somebody makes you, somebody somebody cuts you in line. Somebody cuts you in line. Uh-uh, what the fuck are you doing? Uh-uh, get your ass to the back of the line. Whoa, way too much aggression. Let's think of another one. Somebody cuts you off in traffic and you speed up on the gas to catch up only to shoot them a bird or something like that. Beep your horn at them, get up on their tailgate and you just start pressing them, getting up on their tailgate, beeping your horn hard. If that's the kind of pattern you display, that's a aggression. That's a pattern of aggression. If that's the kind of aggression, if that's the kind of behavior you display, when someone cuts you off where you got to go get on the gas, speed up, catch up to them, get on their tailgate, um, all the way up to their bumper, make sure they're looking at you in the mirror and you wave them the one finger salute, right? And you, and you, and you just cuss them all out kind of crazy. That's a pattern of aggression. Or what's another pattern of aggression? Every time you have a dispute with your loved one or you have a, you got a dispute with your loved one or you're having a debate with somebody you love. But it always gets louder. The, 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 the tone raises. It gets louder and it's, it becomes an argument. Um, the moment, you know, you he, tell, he, your, he tells you something like he's your boss. Baby, can you go pick that up? With me? Who the fuck you think I am? You think I'm your maid? Damn, all I did was just ask you to go pick up, you know, that piece of paper over there for me. You know what I'm saying? And then you, who the hell you think I am? You think I'm your maid? What, 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 what do you, you know, what do you think I'm, I'm supposed, I'm your slave? Am I your slave? No. Well, who you think I am? 
Well, I just asked you a question. Could you do it or not? Displaying patterns of aggression. Patterns of aggression looks like, you know, it can, it can be confused with anger. But aggression is anger progressively getting worse. Anger is aggression. Aggression is anger that progresses. Aggression, anger and progressive. Anger that's progressive. Aggression is anger that progresses. So you will have aggression. And so, and it escalates and it rises all the time. And so your anger is always going up another level, another level, another level. Your anger could stay at a state where if you're angry, you could stay angry in that moment, at that moment. But if you display patterns of aggression, if you display patterns of aggression, then that's because you are angry, but it gets progressively worse. You begin to always be angry at any given thing that and anything could trigger you. Anything could trigger you and anything can make you be like somebody looking at you wrong or somebody looking at you for too long. And you're like, what the hell are you looking at? Aggression. Somebody somebody bumps you walking by accidentally. Um, excuse you. Aggression. Somebody jumps into your conversation while you're talking to somebody else. Uh, excuse me, could you mind your business? Aggression. There's a way to say things and do things without having to display such animosity or or, or display the patterns of aggression. And one of the things you can do to begin to work on your aggression is by calmly, 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 before you analyze a situation, before you look at something and break it down, analyze, before you analyze and criticize and publicize somebody's business or before you analyze what's happening or before you criticize what's done, I would say begin to communicate to yourself. Begin to communicate to yourself. And start talking about how you can approach the situation. Without the aggression. And sometimes you might have to communicate the conversation before you have it. You understand? Sometimes you might have to communicate the conversation before you have the conversation. And so you can begin to move into a space that is more comforting for everyone in the public or everyone around you. Or it's not holding back your truth. Oh, I'm going to speak my truth everywhere I go, anywhere I go. I'm not going to hold back. Aggression is not you speaking your truth when you voice something. You can speak your truth and you don't even have to do it in love. But you could do it in kindness. And so there is a way to speak your truth in kindness, gentleness. Because it's not what goes, it's not what goes, it's not what comes out of a man that defiles him, but what goes into a man that defiles him, what comes from within you. So it's about what's in you that's defiling you, defiling the way you think and the way you act, the way you behave. I'm turn this music off. And so it's not about how you defile yourself 
or it's not about how you display yourself in public or around others, but it's about how you behave for you. So you may have anger issues of aggression. You may say things and you may do things that doesn't really depict who you truly are. And so you come back and say, I'm so sorry. That's not the way I normally act. That's not the way I normally behave. Well, it's not the way you normally act, nor is it the way you normally behave. But the way you're acting and behaving is because you got these patterns of aggression that you're not dealing with. And like I said, before you criticize, analyze, and um, before you criticize, criticize and analyze, I want you to communicate. Communicate to yourself what's going on here. And have a conversation with yourself. What just happened? And before you approach it, you know, you don't have to hold back on your truth. Some people say, I'm going to speak my truth, but they think that yelling it, being high-pitched in their tone, you know, being very aggressive, they think that's them, that's them speaking their truth. But there's a way that you can speak your truth. And it comes across very, very, very um, ge genuine, like real. It comes across very genuine, very real, very accepted, acceptable. And it can be acceptable. It can be very acceptable. People can accept you for who you are. Without you being aggressive. Without you being overly overtly angered about that and people can accept you more in your truth now you're being heard now you're being heard so you would be heard by the way you would be heard would be by ways of doing things differently the way you approach things and you approach them before you speak it you communicate it and then after you've communicated, then can you say, hmm, how would I come at the situation or how would I like them to have approached me in the situation? Well, genuine, kind, gentle. You don't have to display, you don't have to love, display love to get something out. But you, you do want to display kindness so that you're more heard and more felt. You know, you, you're more felt when you're doing it from a place of kindness. You're more felt when you do it from a place of kindness. When you do it from kindness, people hear you more. When you do it from anger, aggression, people tend to look over you, overlook you. They tend to think, oh, you just having a moment right now. Who cares? I don't care. So now you have moments where you're communicating to yourself how to approach this, how to do this. You know, at the, at the Soul Center, when you come to the Soul Center, you know, and the Soul Center is my, um, my place of work where I, um, my, my, um, practice and you come to the soul center you'll learn a lot of how to deal with these behavior patterns um the soul center is going to help you gain more of a sense of of self-awareness self-awareness so you'll learn more about self-awareness and that's one of the things with aggression is that you don't have any self-awareness. You don't have any awareness of self, where you are, when, when you are speaking, and what you are saying. Where you are, when you are speaking, and what you are saying. You have no self-awareness of where you are, and so you, you, you display this aggression, and you don't know who's around you, children, whatever, right? And you're displaying this behavior from a 
a dense standpoint. Remember, these are all lower density attributes. These are all lower density attributes. This, 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 all of these patterns that I've displayed to you. These are all lower density attributes. Oh, um, I was going to say over communicating, but um, aggression is a lower density attribute. It is an attribute where, and it's not a good attribute, it's a bad attribute, but it's a lower density attribute to, to, to not have any self-awareness of where you are. What you're saying. When you're saying it. It all supposed to make sense. And it all will make sense. What you say. When you say it. Wherever you are. And if you don't. Pay attention. Have any awareness. Of what you say. And when you're saying it. It's going to be of no avail. It's going to be to no avail. It's going to have no effect. Zero effect. On the ears and on the minds of those you're trying to. Help understand you. So sometimes. Aggression can also be. Minute. And. And. And, and micro. Sometimes on a, on a micro level, on a mac, on a micro level, on a micro level, on a micro level, aggression could look like when someone's talking and before they finish, you cut in. That's on a micro level. On a macro level, aggression is, on a macro level, aggression is when you are Displaying behaviors. <sighs> Aggression is when you are displaying behaviors very frankly, out loudly, boldly. You understand? So you would be like, someone says to you, again, someone cuts you off in line. You say, uh-uh, excuse me, um, take your ass to the back. That's Aggression. You understand what I'm saying? And so, it's not anger, it's aggression. You, it's like, it's pent up readiness. It's pent up disrespect or it's pent up um, embarrassing someone. It's pent up um, um, making someone feel small. It's pent up making someone feel less than. It's pent up. This is the stuff that's pent up and it's ready to come out. Ready to say something to make someone feel small. Ready to say something to look good in the moment. Ready to say something to make ourselves look bigger than, than others. Ready to say something to make ourselves feel more superior. Ready to say something to embarrass someone in front of a bunch of people. Or ready to say something to look like the most intelligent being in the room. Ready to say something. And so... This is on a macro level. On a micro level, aggression could look like when someone's speaking and you got to, you cut in, boom, before they can even finish. And it's like ready to say something. You don't know how to be still. And you're ready to say something at the moment. You're ready to say something at any moment. It's, it's the time presents itself. You're there ready to be like, okay, here it is, you know, and someone is speaking, but you cut in. Aggression is ready to move or ready to say something at the drop of a hat. Got a lot of aggression. <clears throat> a lot of aggression. And so you have to learn how to manage that aggression. You have to learn how to manage that aggression. And it comes with learning. That these behaviors are, or these patterns are lower density patterns. Um, I was watching a movie the other day and I heard them use that word. It was so beautiful. I forget what movie I was watching. Maybe it was the movie Selfless. And he was like saying something like uh, that being low density, that just a low density, you know, low density, you know, low, low, lower density beings are heavy. 
So I spoke about heaviness yesterday. Um, but these patterns are heavy patterns. Patterns that feel like you got a bunch of rocks inside of a, 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 a bag and you throw it in the ocean, it's going to sink to the bottom. You understand? Heaviness. And the thing is, you try to raise up and float back to the top of the surface with, with patterns of aggression. So you have moments where you get your ass to the back of the line. Or, Don't cut me off. Or, what you looking at? These are these are moments you of you displaying of yourself trying to rise back to the top. But the fact is you can't rise to the top because you're still sunken. You're sunken. You're in a lower density place. But the moment you try to you're trying to rise back to the top at these opportunities, there's opportunities that presents itself where you could rise back to the top. But you can't rise because your aggression, the pent up ready to say something or embarrass someone or um, be nasty towards someone or talk ill of someone the, the, or, 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 you know, yell at someone. The pent up aggression is ready to burst out at the seams that any given opportunity, you don't do what? You don't, you, 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 you don't analyze, you, you don't, you analyze and you criticize quickly and you judge after that, but you don't communicate. You analyze and criticize too quickly. But you don't communicate. So you're this so you're in a sunken place. Hear me out, because I'm about to go on one. You're in a sunken place. Sunken. A very density, a very low density place. You're in a sunken, low density place. And you're trying to rise out of that lower density. And the moments of opportunity presents themselves to you. There's moments of opportunities that presents itself to you. Moments that will that this that that opportunities that allow you to be able to speak, that will allow you to be able to speak, and 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 say things kindly, say things nicely, say things gentle, say things in a more genuine way. And when these opportunities rise, what do you do? Get your butt to the back of the line. Uh, why are you cutting me off? Uh, why are you staring at me like that? Uh, do you got a problem? That's the stuff that's pent up. That's aggression. Ready to burst out at the seams. And so this is this pent up aggression in you is a is a is an action of you trying to rise from the sunken place. You trying to rise back to the surface from the density place. And these are opportunities when they present themselves, and, and instead of you communicating quickly, what's happening here? And you don't look at what you say, when you say it, where you say it. You don't have any self-awareness. But because this pent up making someone feel small, this pent up getting ready to, uh, this pent up making someone feel smaller than they are, or pent up uh, uh, um, embarrassed, ready to embarrass someone, pent up ready to yell at someone in public, pent up ready to make someone look bad for something they're doing wrong in front of people. Bosses do this a lot. Make someone, what are you doing? That's not the right way to do it. Let me show you. And everybody around gets to look at you like you don't know what you're doing. You're a rookie. You're too green. You don't have any experience. Everybody gets to look around at you as the inexperienced one who don't know what they're doing, incapable of learning anything. And so this is what happens a lot with people and their feelings. And so the moment an opportunity begins to raise themselves up where you can say something kind, gentle, nice, or and you get to display an action of gentleness to everyone around you and and be a leader and show them how to handle people and instead you don't do that you don't know how to do that and so aggression comes out and this is the opportunity where you're trying to raise up from the surface you're trying to raise and expand and elevate yourself from the dense place to the surface to the light place or where you can become light you're trying to do this, but you can't do it because the moment the opportunity presents itself, you lash out with aggression. It bursts out at the seams. It's already pent up, ready to come out. And so the first thing you do is you don't stop to hold it in and communicate it to yourself and breathe and relax and understand what's getting ready to come out versus what you can say to make the situation better. And so you display these actions one after the other. 
someone cuts you off in traffic, you be like, F you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what you do, displaying aggression. F you, mother effer, and, 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 and your mama smell like this, and your daddy ain't, sh or, you know, you're in a relationship with someone, and they, you know, talk about you, y'all have a little dispute, and they start bringing up all of the things you didn't do in the past. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you always do this. You always do that. You don't never do this. I remember the time this and that. I remember when you did this two years ago. I remember you did, you know what I'm saying? Ready to, pent up, ready to embarrass you. Pent up, ready to uh, uh, um, frustrate you. Pent up, ready to make you look bad. Pent up, ready to, to put you down. Pent up, ready to make you feel like sh crap. Pent up stuff, ready to come out and make you feel less than. This is stuff is already pent up in them. And, that, and the moment the opportunity presents itself, that's called aggression. That's called at the ready. They're ready to give it all to you. It's like, damn. Where all that aggression come from? Where all that aggression come from? Mm -hmm. So that stuff is already pent up in someone. You feel me? And then you have the other. Opportunities that presents himself, <clears throat> the micro aggressions, the micro aggressions. You know what the micro aggressions are? Um, <laughs> uh, this happens. The micro aggressions are like um, uh, when someone says, "Like, let's just think of a scenario of a micro aggression." When someone is saying things like. Is that how black people, is that how, is that, is that, is that always, is that what black people do all the time? Black, or someone saying, black people are always known for this. Black people do that the most. Microaggressions is like, um, uh, 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 microaggressions is if someone's playing loud music down the street and it's like, man, those hoodlum, those, those, those black bastards, that's microaggression. Someone saying, you, you hear loud music being played in the car coming down the street. Automatically, you begin to assume it's a black person. That's not racist. That's just a microaggression of racism. It, 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 it progresses. It's not racism. It's just a microaggression. It, it starts to progress into racism. So you hear loud music in the car coming down the street and someone says, man, those black kids are always playing loud music when they drive down the street. And then the car rides by your, ho your house and, you look in, and you, you're able to look into the car and you realize, oh shit, it's white boys. It's not black boys. You understand? Microaggressions is, um, microaggressions is, people think it's racist to say black people love fried chicken. Um, that was a microaggression that became racist after a while. That was a microaggression where they always said that black people love watermelon and chicken. And we kept thinking that, and because um, we always thought that's true, I never thought that. Was, I never thought something like that was true. Black people, all black people, love fried chicken and watermelon. I was like, listen, I don't see a lot of black people eating watermelon. I mean, I, I, I know we like watermelon, but who don't? Who don't like watermelon? I see all people. I, I see a lot of people eat watermelon. Um, what is that black people thing like? But that's a microaggression. That progressed along the way and became racist. So now they might draw a picture of a black person eating a fried chicken and you could call it racist. Why? Because guess what? They that was a microaggression at one time. A microaggression is someone saying, um, um, even on the other side of that, look at the other side. White people can't dance. <laughs> That's a microaggression that became um, you know, progressively true. And is, it, is, is that true? All white people can't... No, that's not true. Because, beloved... <laughs> white people can dance. Not saying all white people, but... I, come on, just go to YouTube. <laughs> and type in white people dance. White people... Break dancing. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it, dancing could have come from... Dancing could have come from... Um, Black people or hip hop culture or dance. Cultural dancing comes from 
majority black people, right? But it isn't to say that they didn't get inspired to want to learn. So we start to say, yeah, these are stereotypes. Stereo stereotypes of microaggressions. That's what they become. Stereotypes. That was that's a better word than saying racism. But it become a stereotype. Once we say it so much, white people can't dance, white people can't dance, white people can't dance, white people can't dance. Next thing you know, it becomes a stereotype. Black people eat fried chicken. Black people eat fried chicken. That's called a microaggression. It becomes pro progressively true after a while because it gets said enough to where you start to believe it. And you start to say, wow. Wow. Um, that's true. We do eat fried chicken. We do love fried chicken. I don't eat fried chicken. I'm, I'm not included in that. Okay. Period. But let's go back to uh, the way we start to deal with these microaggressions. Um, other microaggressions is not just all racial, racial stereotypes of microaggression, but there's microaggressions inside of you towards your loved one or somebody in your family. And it could just be displaying um, little, you know, little, and, I, and I'll be honest with you. I do this. I know how to critique every little thing in a person. And I'm really, I guess I could say I'm a perfectionist, but the truth is, you know, that's why we got to deal with this. Because even I um, can admit that there's times where I still have moments where I'm critiquing, criticizing something someone does. But I'm a perfectionist. And therefore, I want perfection around me. And I know we can't be perfect. But that, to me, that's another micro. See, that's a microaggression right there. There's no such thing as perfection. Actually, yes, there is. There is a such thing as perfection. And, if, and, 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 and that's a microaggression that's been taught and told to us. Over and over and over again. That we believe, begin to believe in that notion, that narrative that there is no such thing as perfection. Listen. There is a such thing as per per perfect. Everything that is made. I don't care if you came out the womb with five fingers or or, or with only with only on um, five fingers and, and, or with one hand or um, everything is made perfectly whole and complete. That was the complete. If somebody comes out of the womb with one hand. That was the completion of that project. That was the completion. That's a per. That's that's perfection. That's still perfection. It isn't abnormal it's just per, it's per, that's perfection and so everything is perfectly whole and complete in the way that it that 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 it comes into this planet listen we're like plants we're like every other micro microbial you know living organism on this planet there's some trees that grow tall there's some trees that grow short you understand? There's some trees that flowers that take time to blossom. There's some that sprout real quick. There's some that bud early. There's some that bud later. There's there, this this notion that there is no perfection is a microaggression in and of itself. So we got to get rid of the microaggressions. We got to get rid of the aggression. The aggression, and we do that by simply removing these ideas from around people that they're not capable. They're not capable enough to 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 live up to the standard of living I love I live, or they're not capable enough to live up to the level of knowledge that I that I live because that's me I'm talking about. I have this notion where you're not capable enough. No one's capable enough, and it definitely um it definitely keeps me from. Truly, truly helping my people expand and grow because I can be more gentle. I can be more kind 
And that's what we want to do when we talk about being. If someone is not capable enough, you don't make them feel bad for it. You don't quickly go off on them for it. And you don't make them feel like they're incapable for it. Communicate what's happening. Remember I said communicate to yourself what's happening. And then gently, kindly. You ain't got to do it with love. But you can do it kindly. You know, the nine fruits of the spirit is gentleness, loving kindness. You understand what I'm saying? Meekness, humbleness. So we got to show and display levels of kindness, levels of gentleness, levels of showing someone that you, you're you not incompetent in certain areas. But people can be incompetent around you and you don't have to deal with that incompetence. That's why bosses fire people. Their level of incompetence, the their level of not not able to comprehend the language or the work. There was times where I would be on a job I just couldn't comprehend the 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 the, the uh I couldn't comprehend the the what is it description? Well, I couldn't comprehend the level of work that I I, I was supposed to do and display. I've had jobs where I just couldn't, I couldn't comprehend the level of um, output that they wanted from me. I couldn't comprehend that kind of work. Huh? I couldn't comprehend. So I was like any other job I do, if I don't understand it, I quit it. And there was jobs where I just couldn't understand the level of output that was needed for me. I couldn't understand it. I just didn't understand it, especially jobs with numbers. <laughs> Anything that this, that asks me to, you know, crunch and punch and type numbers, I'm not. I'm like draw a blank. But my point is, and I'm not trying to stay too long on that, that point. We got to display levels of. Of, of gentleness and kindness and substitute for aggression. So we got to stop analyzing, criticizing, and we got to start showing gentleness and kindness and, and giving people not the benefit of the doubt, but the opportunity to present themselves, not just worthy, but present themselves able to present themselves able. Yeah, you're good with numbers. I'm not. I'm not good with numbers. So we got to get people with love, with, with, with kindness and with gentleness. People receive that as an opportunity to do what? To continue to receive that. You know what it does to a person when you say something kind to them? When you're gentle with them, it makes them feel good. It makes them feel love. It makes them feel seen. It makes them feel heard. And when people are feeling like they're being seen, valued, heard, understood, you know what they do? They do more acts. And, and, and sometimes, see, I'm, I was so guilty of this to the point where I never give people the opportunity because people know that my critique. I will critique them. And so therefore they operate in a very, they operate around me in a very careful way. And that's because I didn't give them the opportunity by sharing or showing kindness and gentleness in moments of mis, missed, missed takes, not mistakes, but missed takes. I never give them the opportunity in moments of mistakes to make that up again, to take that missed thing again, to do it again. But when a person displays a level of incompetence where day after day, opportunity after opportunity, chance after chance, they display the same level of incompetence, it's no longer on you to be gentle or kind. And I'm not saying gentle and kind to them anymore. 
it is now your duty to be gentle and kind. Listen to me. It's no longer on you to be gentle and kind and continue to give them opportunities. But it is on you to be gentle and kind and say, look, something ain't gelling right here. Something ain't gelling together. And, and like a boss that doesn't need you on a job anymore, he fires you. Something ain't gelling, man. And, and, and I'm, I'm here to just tell you, listen, I have respect for you as a person. I do. You know I respect you. But, you know, time in, 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 in time is precious. And we have to honor that. And if I'm allowing you to be around me with this level of incompetence that you continuously display, then... It's killing me, literally. It's killing me, softly. So I have to softly let you down because I don't want to hurt your feelings in killing you back because you're killing me when it comes to my expansion of growth. So I don't want to kill you back with hurtful and harmful words. What I have to do, what I have to do What I have to do is let you go. And I can do it kindly and I can do it gently, but I'm still going to do it in my truth. I'm not going to be like, you a fuck up. You don't know shit. You don't know what you're doing. Get the fuck from around me. I don't need you over here. Go. Just go. Please get out. Bye. Go. That's too much aggression. And I'm guilty of that. I'm very guilty of that. You understand what I'm saying? And so, therefore, you know, people need to be let down softly, kindly. And so, you have to be like, look, and, 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 and especially, especially, and I'm going to say this, especially if you're running a business, if you're running a business or building your brand, remember, business and brand are two different, right? Especially if you're building your brand. When you're building your brand, you have to you have to scale down to scale up. Mm. Write that down. Oh my god, that was so good. Ah. Oh, hallelujah. That was so good. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> I don't care what you do when you're trying to be successful. You got to scale down to scale up. You want to lose weight? You got you to lose all the fat to look good. You got to shrink in order to look more big, you know, as, as far as beautifulness goes. You got to shrink. If you're trying to lose weight, you got to lose that weight. In order to look more beautiful, abundant, to look more abundantly beautiful. And if you want to gain muscle, you got to scale down on what you eat so that you can look more beautifully, abundantly beautiful. You got to scale down to scale up and you got to let people go. And so let's heal this matter real quick. And we can bounce. Lose to win. That's right. Let's heal this matter real quick. And let's talk about letting people go. Let's talk about receiving your blessing, your good, your, your expansion, your upgrade, your evolution. Let's talk about that. You want to evolve. You want to grow. You want to elevate. You want to expand. Write that down. Four E's. Evolve. Well, not four E's because I said grow. Evolve. Elevate. And expand. You want to evolve. You want to elevate. You want to expand. Let's start with the four. Let's start with the three E's. 
You want to evolve in your level, not of only of thinking, but speaking. It's time to change the way you speak. It's time to change. This is how you heal the pattern of aggression. You want to evolve. Change the way you speak. By communicating to yourself before you say anything. Change the way you speak. You want to evolve. Because when you evolve in, in communication, oh my goodness, this is a real study. And not only is this a real study, but this is true for me. And I'm talking about exponentially true for me. That when you change the way you speak, it elevates your thinking level. It elevates... Um, who was it that said, uh, I always quote Les Brown, and I think it was Les Brown who said this. He said, yeah, he said, he said, Les Brown said, there's some thinking, to, listen to me. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, but I know what he said. He said, he said, there's some thinking. He said, this level of thinking, he said, it is this level of thinking that cannot, that cannot um, take me. Uh, uh, that can only this level of thinking only got me this far, and it's going to take another level of thinking to get me far again. Basically, it goes back to the Albert Einstein quote that says that a problem cannot be solved on the same level of the problem. But it was different the way Les Brown said it. A problem cannot be solved on the same level of the problem. The problem, the answer to a problem, is not on the same level where the problem exists. You have to evolve, you have to elevate, you have to evolve, and you have to evolve in the way you speak. And this elevates your thinking level. And so Les Brown said that it is this level of thinking that only got me this far that cannot get me any further. And I'm trying to remember it, but let me paraphrase it real quick. He basically was saying that this level of thinking where I'm at, I have to now... I've I, 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 I evolved, but I have to now elevate. I can't just, I can't just be here and not elevate myself. I have to elevate. I have to raise up my level of thinking. And how do you do that? Literally changing the way you speak does this. And I'm telling you, this is a study that has been done and it's happened for me. The way you speak, you got to evolve in the way you speak. And the way you speak begins to elevate your thinking. This is the level that begins to, you got to start speaking different from the way you hear people speak. You, instead of saying, instead of saying like, um, I wish, say I am. Instead of saying I can, say I will. Instead of saying, um, you know, I, I will. I, say, instead of saying, uh, is it possible? No, say it must. Leave yourself no option. Stop giving yourself these languages where it stays on a level of where you got to find the answer from that. Now with me having a practice, having a practice and building a brand, I got to evolve even more in the way I speak because I'm speaking to a new audience. I'm speaking to a new audience now, a, a, a business, a business minded type of people, people who understand a different language. You understand? Try to go into a corporate meeting speaking this, this, the slang that you speak from the streets and trying to understand when they're talking contractual type of language. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I remember, I remember, I'll give you a story. I remember, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. I remember, this was, this happened to me. I remember I was invited to an event. I was invited to an event. And I remember it was all suited and booted, suited and booted event, like ties, neckties, three piece suits, nice shoes. It was a business type of thing. And I was a speaker. I was a very good, still am a very good speaker, but I was one of those speakers who literally was making a big name for myself. I was, I was like expanding. I was growing and then I scaled down. I was like, no more um, because of. Other things, but I was really beginning to like feel myself. I was like, yo, I'm in the right space. I feel good. And I was getting invited to like all these corporate, not corporate type, but business type 
meetings and events and dinners and luncheons. And I was getting invites everywhere I go to come here and come there and listen to these powerful, powerful, powerful millionaires. I was getting invited to places where only millionaires were. You know what I'm saying? Literally, people were millionaires. And I remember being in a conversation with a group of people. And they were speaking a whole nother. I couldn't understand the language. It was like they were speaking Chinese to me. Because I couldn't understand the lingo. It was a different terminology. Because, why? Because there was a level of thinking. There was a microaggression that happened with me. Me telling myself that I can't be a millionaire for at least, I, can, I have to wait at least 10 years to be a millionaire. That's a microaggression. That's me believing that, oh, it's going to take me at least 10 years to be a millionaire. When I could be a millionaire right overnight. And I was telling myself, it's going to take me at least 10 years to be a millionaire. At least three years to be a millionaire. At least four years to be a millionaire. It's going to take me at least this long to be. And I was in a space of millionaires. And, that, and they were talking a language literally amongst each other. I just couldn't understand. And I left. I left because I was like, I felt like I didn't belong. I was like, I don't belong here. I don't understand what the hell they're talking about. They were talking on a level I couldn't catch up to and understand. I had to leave. And so I was like, <laughs> I felt inadequate. But that was because of the microaggression that I would tell myself. And the pattern, and it only became a pattern of me constantly doing that with me over time until I had to go on a journey and believe that I was who I say I am and believe that I have good to offer and buy into it and not allow any of that language to creep into my head anymore. And so now I don't allow certain languages to creep into my head anymore. I don't allow certain words to creep into my head. So number one, we have to evolve. And and, and and the way we speak, we have to evolve in the way we speak so that it begins to elevate our thinking. See, the way you speak, if I was if I would evolved in the way I spoke, I would have been able to stay at that party. And I would have been able to think on their level because I've elevated in my thinking. You have to evolve the way you speak. The way you speak, what comes out of your mouth actually begins to elevate you in your consciousness. It starts to expand and elevate your consciousness. And once you elevate in your thinking, then you expand in your consciousness and your awareness. Your awareness begins to expand. You begin to see through people. Your awareness begins to expand. You begin to see through people and see exactly who they are. This is why... Most people do interviews before you get hired. This is why people do interviews before you get hired on a job. They do an interview for a reason. Why does the, the interview process have to happen? So they can see who you are. They can, they're, they're kind of seeing through you. And they ask you a series of questions to kind of see your answer, see where your mind is, see how evolved and, 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 and expand, see how evolved you are in, in your language and see how elevated you are in your thinking and see how expanded you are in your awareness, your consciousness, see how expanded you are in your self-awareness. And so they're doing these things to assess who you are. They're assessing who you are. So they're looking at who you are and they're saying, is this, this person is either fit or not fit. How can they tell if you're fit for a job? By the way you speak. They can tell by the way you speak. So you have to evolve. How evolved your, your language. How evolved you are in speaking, communicating. And they can tell if you're fit for the job. And how elevated your thinking is. How, how elevated you are in your thinking. So we heal microaggressions. We heal aggression. We heal the pattern of aggression. With changing, evolving the way we speak. And be like, instead of being like, why are you staring at me? Why are you looking at me for so long? Who are you? Why are you over here? Why are you cutting in line? The line is that way. That's too aggressive. You're aggressive. The line is back there. You need to get your ass to the back of the line like everybody else. You just too much aggression. Can't wait to get that out. You can't wait to embarrass someone. You can't wait to... Make someone feel down or to belittle someone. You can't wait to make someone feel small. You can't wait to critique and criticize someone. I'm guilty of criticizing people. 
around me because I believe in perfection. And perfection does exist. And so I want perfection around me. And, 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 and it's not too hard to ask for that. But the fact of the matter is, if I'm not getting it, then I have to evolve in my way of speaking. So that it only, not only does it elevate my thinking, but it elevates their thinking. And this is how you get rid of the aggression by evolving in the way you speak so that it elevates not only your thinking, but their thinking. And when you begin to speak to someone with kindness, gentleness, when you begin to speak to people like this, this elevates their thinking of who they are. Instead of them feeling small, they feel better. Instead of them feeling like they're not enough, they feel like they're worthy. Instead of them feeling like they're not good, they feel great. You understand what I'm saying? And once you evolve your speaking and begin to speak with people to people in a more kind, genuine, and a more healing way, people begin to think of themselves differently. And then when they think of themselves differently, Guess what it does? It elevates, it expands your awareness, your consciousness. It expands your consciousness of that being. And you begin to see the growth. Then can you see the growth? But you got to give people, you got to open up the opportunity for people to come in to grow. If you don't open up the opportunity for people to slide in that space and you then thus speak to them in the evolved way, in the evolved way. That elevates not only you, but elevates their thinking. If you don't allow them the opportunity to slide into that space, you'll never be able to see them grow. If you always keep the door shut from that of that opportunity to see them evolve and grow, you'll never see them grow. You'll never see them as a, a person growing. You'll never see them expanding in their in their in their awareness, their self awareness. You'll never see them expand or or evolve in their speech, or you'll never see them elevating their thinking. You'll never see them do any of this because you keep the the window of opportunity closed from them, from cutting them off from being able to grow and elevate and and, and evolve. So what you have to do is you have to open up the opportunity, allow them to slide in. Allow them to slide in and give them the space now that you've created. Uh, what space? What kind of a space did you create? You created a space of opportunity, one, but you created a space of healing. A healing space to say, in this space, you will not be judged. In this space, you will not be ridiculed. In this space, you will not be criticized. In this space, you will only be given the opportunity to present yourself. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what it means by giving someone enough rope to hang themselves. You will only be given the opportunity to present yourself. This is why you got a 90-day period. After the interview, you get a 90-day period on a job. Present yourself worthy. So you get a 90-day probation period on a job. Present yourself worthy. So here you are. I'm giving you the space to present yourself worthy. And... If your level, and I'm going to do my, my part by speaking kind, being genuine towards you, and speaking love. And I'm going to do my part as a leader to help you elevate. I'm not just going to let you sit there and grow on your own. I'm going to water you. I'm going to give you light. I'm going to give you oxygen. I'm going to make sure you're like a plant. You get room to breathe. I'm going to pour into you. I'm not just going to let you sit there and not expand. Especially around me, you got to. So I'm gonna do whatever. If you if, in, if you are in the space where I operate, if you are in my space, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you're around me growing. It's my job. If I gave you that space, then it is my job to help you evolve. It is my job to help you elevate. It is my job to help you expand. Why? Because I gave you that space, that sacred coveted space. I gave you that sacred coveted space. So it's not on you to. Pick up and learn and just evolve and expand and grow. It is on me to make sure I water you. I give you light. I give you oxygen. I give you room to breathe. I help you grow. It is on me to help you do that. And so we heal the aggressiveness in our ways. We heal aggression in our, in our being, in our life. We heal that aggression by allowing people the opportunity to slide in. You open up the opportunity, they slide in. Once they slide in, now they're like a plant. You get to water them, you get to give them light, you're giving them your mind, 
You're giving them your knowledge. You're giving them your wisdom. You're giving them all your experiences that you know. This removes, this removes criticism. This removes um, analyzing what people do. This removes, this is why on a job you get a 90 day period, but you also get trained during those 90 days. They're, during those 90 days, you're going to get trained how to do this job. You understand? And so that's the same way. When you're allowing people in your space, in your life, you give them the opportunity, equal opportunity, right? You give them opportunity. Slide in. Come on in. And it's your duty and your job to pour in to this being. And in order to see them elevate, to, to evolve, elevate, and expand. So now what I'm doing with you, um, helping you remove these, um, relieve yourself of a pattern of, of aggression is you got to... You got to communicate to yourself and you got to change the you got to communicate to yourself so that you change the way you speak. This is how you evolve. You got to communicate when people are doing something that is not uh, um, respectable by you or respected by you or when people are doing something that is that is not um, of your standard. You don't be like, what the hell are you doing? No, you gave them the opportunity to come into the sacred space. Now you must. Pour into them and say, no, let me show you how to do this. Now a person begins to elevate in their thinking. Why? Because they see your thinking. This is what's happening here. Look at how I'm painting this picture. You understand? When you start to change the way you speak. And when you see someone not living up to the standard. Instead of saying, what the hell are you doing? You change the language and you say, let me help you. Let me show you how to do it. Let me help you do this. Let me, let me, let me help you grow in this space. Let me show you how I normally do it. Now you what? Elevated their thinking. They see it from your perspective, from your mind. They see how you do it, how you like it done, how you want it done. And they can give it, give it their own little spice and their own little flavor, but still do it to your liking, but give it a nice little touch of their own essence. And when they do it, you know, because you want to feel it come from a genuine place. So you allow them the space. You gave them the opportunity. So now you're allowing them the space to give something their, 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 their signature touch in, in their space. That way, what? You create a department for them in your life. Here's a department for you. You run this department. Why? Because you show me you're great at this. You do it beyond. You, you took in what I've given you, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the, the information. And you've, and, you, and you've grown exponentially with it. You've expanded beyond my, you've expanded beyond my own um, uh, uh, expectations. And you've shown me. So now here's a department for you. Here's a department for you. And so you take what you get. I, I, I give you something. You take it. You grow it. You give it your signature, your flavor, your touch to it. It feels genuine. It feels real. And now I get to sit back. And go on to do other things. That's your department now. You take that part. You take that. That's your department. You run that department. You manage that department. You operate that department. I'm going to be over here doing other things to help us grow. Why? Because I'm the visionary. But we're not talking about business. We're really talking about helping you get rid of aggression. And you do this by allowing people. By changing the way you speak. So we communicate. When someone's doing something wrong. Again, you don't say what the hell are you doing. You say let me help you do this. And that now they can see their, your thinking. Beloved, with the exposure of your mind to them in that moment, that elevates their thinking. Oh, I see it now from a level I couldn't see it from before. I see it now from a level because, remember, a problem cannot be solved on the same level that the problem is created. You cannot solve a problem on the same level where the problem exists. You have to elevate in your thinking and maybe you need someone to help you elevate in that way. It's not all the time. Do we do we elevate on our own? And, and, and most of the time, sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. But at the times you don't know what you don't know. Just put it like that. You don't know what you don't know. And so therefore you need someone to help you elevate in that thinking process. So now I give you the opportunity. Now I'm giving you the space to elevate. Okay? Um, here you are elevating in your thinking. 
And then what happens from that is your awareness expands. This is how you get rid of aggression, beloved. Anger inside of you. Why ain't never making it? Why ain't never successful? Why ain't never making no money off of this? Why can't I never see the, the beautiful side of this? Why can't I never? Why can't nothing good ever happen? You see, that's microaggression. This why can't I? Why can't this? Why doesn't this? Why don't he? Why don't she? You're telling yourself. You're telling yourself these things. Um, my, macroaggression is what the fuck are you looking at? You know, waiting to go off on someone. Microaggression is why it never happened to me. Why I can't never do this? Why can't I change, evolve in the way you speak before you start to say things either in the in the situation outside of itself or in a situation that's individually pertaining to just you. When you say things, when you begin to say things, when you begin to see things, begin to change the way you look at them and speak with them. Begin to change the way you speak. Communicate to yourself. It's going to evolve and then elevate your thinking in that. And then you're going to expand your awareness. Now you're going to have the awareness of knowing what it takes, what to do. And that expansion in and of itself actually takes you up three, four, five, six, seven, even eight more notches in consciousness. Just simply communicating to yourself, changing the way you think, because a problem cannot be solved on the same level where the problem exists. So you change your thinking, and then this level of new thinking opens up a, a world, opens up a new world of, 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 of consciousness, of awareness, of things around you. It opens up to you a whole new world. And it's like, wow. And you start living in that world for a little bit. You start swimming and living and fishing. And, you know, some people, everybody ain't Michael Jordan. Everybody can't grow exponentially the moment they get they pick up a basketball. Everybody doesn't grow to the exponential levels that just that per, that exceeds beyond everyone's imagination and expectations. You understand what I'm saying? Everyone ain't Jordan. Everyone ain't LeBron. Everyone doesn't grow to that speed of understanding. Some people's IQ and certain things allow them to grow. That's why you got to stay in your lane. That's why you stay in your lane. Why? Because your IQ is better. Your IQ is sharp in this space. And you grow. If you stay in your lane, you will grow exponentially beyond your own imagination, your wildest dream. You grow faster because this is the DNA in which your DNA, your IQ is your DNA that you just been planted. You've been planted here in this space with. And you begin to grow and grow and grow faster than the level of growth that you will have done going into an area that's not where you belong. And you go into these areas. Because you are, um, I appreciate you, God, for saying I'm appreciated. I, the, the light from outside is actually blinding the comments. I can't really see the comments. I have to move around to be able to read the comments. Let me see. So, um, that's, 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 that's how we heal the matter. Let me put on my visual assistance real quick. You feel me? How y'all like the, the visual assist, my new visual assistance? So let me read. I'm gonna read y'all comments because I do see a lot of comments. Um, I'm gonna try to get to most of them, but we gotta, you know, close out. Uh, so, so we expand, we evolve in our communication, we elevate in our. Once we evolve in our communication, it elevates us in our thinking. So we elevate in our thinking, and then we expand in our awareness. We know what to say, when to say it, where to say it, without even having to think about where we are. We already know. We know exactly where we are. And we know how to speak with this kindness, this love, this gentleness. Again, giving people the opportunity to be for that kind of kindness and gentleness to be displayed to. When you, people are like plants. When you water it, when you give it light and you give it oxygen, you understand? You allow it to grow, blossom and be and flourish and be very, very, very healthy. But if you just get a plant and you just bring it into your space and you just set it over there in the corner and you do nothing with it, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to the plant? 
eventually it's it's gonna die. If you don't give it no light, no no water, no oxygen, it's going to die. It's just like a human is the same way. A human is the same way. It's not that they're going to die, but that their consciousness will lay flat with you. Their consciousness will lay flat. There will be no expansion of it. It would be like a dead person around you because they're not able to help you expand in, in, in your level of consciousness, in your consciousness. They're not, able to, they're not able to help you expand either. You understand? So, evolve, elevate, evolve in your communication or your speech, elevate in your thinking, and expand and you will ex these are all these are all microaggressions that become good aggressions micro um per not microaggressions micro progressions that's the word these are all micro progressions not microaggressions but micro progressions one elevates the other it it progresses the other one progresses the other changing your level of speaking progresses the way you think changing the way you think Progresses the way you are uh, living in, in, in this space, uh, in, the, in this expanded awareness, in this expand, in this expansion of life, in this, in this consciousness uh, or this conscious dynamic or world that we're in. And that level of thinking expands your mind, expands your awareness, expands the way you, you live and it helps others. Come up to that level too. And so instead of berating someone of what they're not doing, use a gentle and a kind approach and allow them to expand and grow and evolve. And therefore, they draw more in. They draw more people in. And with their kindness, with their gentleness, gentleness and kindness is what draws people in to you. Not anger. People don't listen to you when you yell. People don't hear you when you're angry. People don't hear you when you're doing all that stuff. People don't hear all that. People hear when you're kind to them, loving, gentle. Then can they hear. Then can they evolve. Then can they expand. Okay? So change that up. All right? <clears throat> Let me read these comments because I know we know better. We do better. Um, stereotypes that come from built up aggressive patterns. Everything is made perfect. Perfection is attainable. Um, let me see. Um, I'm so good with numbers. Yeah, I read that one. I am great with numbers. Who else said that? Okay. Do more good. Yeah. To be successful, you have to scale down and scale up. That's right. I said that. Yeah. Frequency, brain, thoughts, thoughts, brain words. True. Remove the former fear-based programs. Multiply it. All, all you can do is continue being you, shed the light, and live in sometimes. You can't change everyone, but you must detach from those entities that want to be stuck on the lower vibe. Absolutely. You must. You must. Listen, listen. What do I say? You can't change people. But you can exchange people. If, if you can't change them, listen, that's okay. But you can exchange them. It's time to remove them and re it's time to replace them for a new. You can exchange people. You can't change people, but you can exchange people. You are appreciated. God, thank you. Um, maybe you was talking to somebody else. I don't know. Or me. Thank you. Um, thoughts are powerful gift. Yeah, thought is a powerful gift. All right, beloved, let's do the breathing and then let's go. Remember, you can find me, get my book online at the link in the web in the bio on Instagram here. And um, you can order a copy from me and I will send it to you with a signed autograph, my John Hancock on it. Feel me? You can do that. All right, <clears throat> let's do the breathing. And I appreciate everyone being in the room today. So let's empty ourselves of all of the gunk. Just 
Now let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Come on. Hold it. Four, three, two, one. Release through the mouth. Breathe again in through the nose. This time out through the nose. One more time. We're gonna breathe in through the nose, out through the nose, and then we're gonna relax. Ready? Breathe in. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Thank you, everyone who joined me on this live. Tomorrow is our last video, Miscommunication. Tomorrow's Miscommunication is our last video to this series, Breaking Habitual Patterns. Continue to follow. Continue to hit the notification so you know when I go live because you're going to be tuned in to more as I go and continue to do the work that I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. And I'm going to continue to do it this way. Um, and so I'm going to continue to come on here live and teach and give away to help you evolve, help you elevate, help you expand. Okay. Uh, I love you. I love me. I love us. Throw your A-frame up. And this means our A-frame. See the infinity? The infinity here. And that's our A-frame, our pyramid. So we do the A-frame. We interlock, bring the pyramid together. That's called an A-frame. And that means Ashe. Atone and Amen. Ashe, Atone and Amen. Hand over your heart. Be well and be light, beloved. Again, I love you. I love me. I love us. Peace. See you tomorrow. I'll be here on time for the last one. Nine o'clock here is 10 o'clock for you on the East Coast. Okay? Peace.